All right, let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to talk about listing presentation. So um, um, there's a couple different ways to do listing presentation, right? So whatever you're comfortable with and whatever works for you is totally great. Okay, so um, when I first got into real estate, I was, I was on the reload team, right? So when I was on the reload team, we always had to compete with two to three other agents. Now my conversion rate was about 84%. And a lot of those that I did not get were because they were using a family member or somebody they'd used before or something like that. So um, I, even, I even had a script for that uh, to make sure that um, even if they were using an agent that they had before, the script was always, you know, hey, that's great. Let me come in and do my listing presentation. Um, when I do my listing presentation, that'll give you uh, an indication of the what your other agent should be doing for you and make sure that they're not just taking advantage of your relationship. So, um, you know, let me come in and present and then we'll kind of go from there. Sound good? And then they'd say, yeah, come in, you know, then I do my presentation. And then and I, at the end, I would, I would always say, well, how did my presentation compare to the other agents? Uh, and then uh, see what they said and then kind of go from there. So I got a couple of those that way too, because the, you know, I don't know if they were just telling me that they had another agent or if they actually had one. So, so listings are, um, listings are uh, leverage, right? So listings are leverage. So we always want to get as many listings, listings as we possibly can. And then every listing we want to turn into a buyer lead also. So they may not purchase your home, but they'll purchase um, another home, right? And that's why we really, really, really want to take as many listings as we possibly can. Now we have checklists for all this stuff. So, um, Yuli is in the process of kind of cleaning up the checklist and, and um, putting them all together for you guys. So as soon as we get that done, we'll give them to you. If you want checklists prior to that, uh, I already have those too, so I can send those to you. Um, so when a lead comes in, you have a pre-listing checklist. First thing you wanna do is call up equity title or send equity title an email and get a preliminary title report. Now, what that does is one, it gets you the legal description that you're going to need uh, when you do list it and when you do get an offer. It will also tell you any um, anything that is clouding the title. So anything that these people owe, it will show every single expense that they have. Now, these days, or should have, um, these days, it's really not as big of a deal. Um, these days, you really want to look at what they owe, um, although it's not as big of a deal as when the market crashed, right? Because when the market crashed, you had to look at every one of the expenses to show up in order for them to be able to sell their home. Um, and sometimes there wasn't enough there to, to sell the house. So you had to do what's called a short sale and you had to go through that process. Um, now there's enough equity usually um, to not have to do that. Now, back in the day, we did all of our short sales by ourselves. Um, you know, we would go through the process and, and turn it into the bank and do all that. I highly recommend you don't do that now. Uh, and the reason is, is because we just, you, you got to do them all the time because the rules and the regulations change. So um, I would just call McFerrin and have McFerrin go over and do the short sale portion of it. Um, and he was charging about $1,500 to $2,000 to do it. And most of the time he could get the bank to pay that. So it was no expense to your seller and so on and so forth. So. So first thing is um, order that preliminary title, get that out of the way. Um, even if you don't list it or if you don't get the listing, uh, you're still ahead of the game because you're going to need that. And sometimes it takes a couple days to get it. It really shouldn't, although it takes a couple days to get it. Next thing you're going to do is pull the tax records and compare it to the seller information. 
So if the seller is saying they have a three bed and the tax records show a four bed, then you can have that conversation, you know, why are the tax records differently? Usually it's the other way around. The seller says it's a four bed and it's only a three bed. Um, and if it's on septic, you cannot advertise it for more than the home is approved for bedrooms on the septic. Okay, so if it's a three bedroom on the septic, that's all you can advertise it for. Now they might have another room that looks like a four bedroom, walks like a four bedroom, talks like a four bedroom. You can't advertise it as that because that's considered fraud, okay? Um, so it just has to be an additional room with a closet. All right, so pull the tack record. Now what's really important, especially if you're doing this in, um, in a lot of areas in Seattle, is because a lot of those homes have basements. So you'll get the basement, you'll get the above square footage, the basement square footage, and you need to make sure whether or not they actually finish the basement or if it's still just a shell. Um, so that will determine what your, your average price per square foot is. Um, and you'll look, if you look on the MLS, uh, some of them are 150 a foot and some of them are 300 a foot. It just depends on whether or not they're counting the uh, basement as finished or not. So you definitely want to pull those tax records and kind of see if they're matching what the seller is, is telling you. Okay. Next thing is um, check your competitive site. So you want to check Zillow, you want to check Zulo, Trulia, you want to check Redfin. And the reason why is because your clients are going to. So if you go in there, you need to know what Zillow is telling them. Uh, and then there's a script for, for why Zillow is wrong. Uh, does anybody know that script? Because they don't have a script. No, you guys don't know the script. Because they only take into account square footage and bedrooms and not upgrades and certain other things. I don't know. Well, Zillow is typically wrong because the information they put into their algorithm is wrong, right? The tax records are only about 85% accurate. So most of the time when you do pull the tax records, they're going to be inaccurate. Um, and Zillow uses that information and they don't know what's right and what's wrong. So that's typically why they're wrong. So, um, you know, when a seller says to you, hey, Zillow says um, that my house is worth X, your response should always be, well, Zillow is just an, a site that was developed to get real estate agents leads. So they, they don't really want their number to be very accurate. It's just a ballpark for you. And typically Zillow is off by anywhere from three to 7%, especially in King County. So if you think about it, if you have a $400,000 house, that's $12,000 on the low side, 28,000 on the high side, and it can be either way. So that's a $56,000 swing. Um, and if you go to the Zillow website, you'll see at the very bottom, they know they're not accurate. So they put their Zillow estimates on there. So you can always click on their Zillow estimates and it'll tell you how far off Zillow is going to be. Um, the next thing you want to do is pre prepare the seller's packet uh, with a photo of the outside of the seller's home. So if your seller calls you up and, and you're going to meet four days later, first thing you want to do is run out there and take a picture of their house, right? Don't use one off the MLS. Don't use Google. Don't use any of that. Go out there and take a picture of their house. And the reason why is because now they know that you've gone out of your way to do the research and that you are very well prepared to have this conversation with them. So you're not just pulling stuff off the internet. Hey, I actually drove out there and I know exactly where your house is, what it looks like, what the neighborhood looks like, all that stuff. So the seller's packets, you can make up, we always had 10 of them laying around. So we always made sure that we had 10 seller's packets ready to go. So the only thing we needed to do was the comparables. And then um, we actually, our seller packet and our marketing plan was in a hardbound book. Um, I don't know if I have any of those. And it, it looked really nice. It had our logo on the front, um, Think Freak Home Team. Um, so when another real estate agent sat down and they saw that book, they knew they were in trouble, right? Because they brought out their flimsy $1 um, portfolio thingy and said, oh, here you go. Ours was nice, great paper, 
and it was in a beautiful hardbound book. Okay. Where do you get those made up? Um, uh, my binding, the place that does our binders, um, you can get those done there. But we actually have them here too. So um, they're in Bethany's office because they're a little spendy. I see. Uh, and they'll only have the Berkshire Hathaway logo on it. If you want to get your own, it's a little expensive. Although, I, you know, I think it's worth it. Mm. Uh, for now, I would just use the Berkshire Hathaway ones. Um, so we would make up 10 of those and have 10 of those ready too, uh, along with our flimsy seller packet. And then we would do the CMA and we did the CMA. It would be in the clear um, folder thingies that we have in the back there. So it, it, it looked really nice. It was a really nice looking presentation. So hardcover binder book and um, the nice one with their picture of their house on the front and not a picture you can get off the internet. Worst case scenario, pull it off the internet. If not, then then go take it, right? If you're too busy to run out there. Um, I would pay somebody 25 bucks to go take a picture real quick. And, and so you could use that. Uh, next thing you wanna do when a, the lead comes in is pull comparables uh, from the MLS. Uh, make sure you view those comparables and you take a look at them. Uh, we use Cloud CMA. Uh, now what's really nice is the MLS um, integrates with Cloud CMA now. So you'll go to the MLS, you'll pull up your, um, your comps. Um, and then in the bottom right, you just click the little button that says CMA, Cloud CMA. As long as you have Cloud CMA open, it will just integrate those MLS numbers into your presentation. So we would do the Cloud CMA, print it out, nice color copies. Um, you know, it's usually 25, 30 pages. Um, binded in the binder that has the clear plastic front and the Berkshire Hathaway uh, burgundy in the back. Um, so we would take all those. We have the seller's packet, we'd have the marketing plan, and we would have the cloud CMA. Now, be careful when you're doing your CMA because really you're going to get a range, right? Um, so if the house is really crappy, it's going to be at this end. If it's really expensive, it's going to be at this end or really nice. It's going to be at this end. Don't put your price anywhere in your cloud CMA, okay? And the reason why is because you don't want to pigeonhole your, you gotta, once you've understood what the where the client is coming from, then you can kind of determine the price um, that you want to tell them, right? Um, so you have your CMA, you have all that. Again, you gotta be careful if you're doing this in Seattle um, and make sure you're comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges. Okay, because if that basement isn't done. Now you guys do realize when you have, um, it's called below grade. When you have a house and here's the house and then here's the basement and the basement has no windows that you can look out of, right? Now they, have, they may have ingress that, egress that will go out to like a, you know, a bunch of cinder blocks or a, a piece of metal that goes around so you can get out in case of fire. Um, if you can't see out the window, the appraiser appraises that at basically half the value they appraise the top part. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if it's got no windows, no nothing, it's truly a basement, then that square footage is going to be worth a lot less than the, the upper square footage. Now you don't really need to worry about that because you're looking at the overall square footage and you're comparing apples to apples. So when you're doing that, um, you know, just think about that when you're pulling your comparables, because you might pull comparables that don't even compare. Right? So you show up to the house, the tax records show one thing, and the seller says a totally different. And as you're walking around, you're like, yep, seller's right, tax records are wrong. Now remember, that's going to happen at least 15% of the time. So you're going to run into that issue um, quite often probably not as much down south as you would up north. Um, their records are a lot older and not as accurate as down here. Mm. Um, okay, so we all good? Order preliminary title, pull the tax records, check Zillow and Redfin, prepare your seller's packet, your marketing plan, and your CMA. And the last thing is you want to practice. 
practice, 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 okay? A listing presentation is nothing but a script. It's just from page one all the way down to the end, it's a script. Now, a lot of agents won't even go over the market plan. They will only go over the CMA. And that's fine as long as the next agent doesn't come in and gives them their presentation. Because if the next agent comes in and gives them a presentation on what they're gonna do, then you are, you're already number two, okay? So be careful of that, right? The other thing is if, you're, if your clients are friends and you've been friends forever and the likelihood of them using somebody else is 85% no, I mean, they're gonna use you, don't take that for granted, right? What we always did is we walked in and go, look, you want the full dog and pony show or you just want me to tell you what your house is worth? And most of them said, hey, I'm going to use you. Um, tell me what my house is worth. Now that backfires a lot. So you got to be very careful. Really, it's just do your listing presentation. Treat them like you didn't even know who they were so that they still respect you as a real estate agent and not a friend, right? Because friends don't get things done, real estate agents, professional real estate agents do, and you want those referrals from them later. So you really wanna make sure that you're, you're giving them a good showing and that you're really impressing them, okay? Make sense? Okay, awesome. All right, always show up to a listing presentation 20 minutes early. And what I really want you to do is drive the neighborhood, find everything that's for sale within you know three or four blocks and take the flyers out so that when you're sitting at the table, your seller goes, hey, did you see that house down the street? And you go, absolutely, I pulled the flyer. So you pull the flyer and you look at it. Now it should be, if it's a comparable, it would have showed up in your CMA. If it's not a comparable, it wouldn't have shown up, although the seller is gonna say, hey, did you see it? And you gotta be familiar with it. So we would drive around and grab all the flyers out of the houses so that when we walked in with our folder, um, you know, and he and the seller said, or she said, hey, did you see that one? You could pull that out and they'll be really impressed by that, okay? So it, when you drive the neighborhood, it also tells you what's going on, right? You need to know where the grocery stores are. You need to know where the libraries, the schools, all that crap is because they're gonna ask you, because most of the time you don't know because you haven't sold in this neighborhood or you, you, know, you haven't lived in this neighborhood, you really don't know. So just spend a good 20 minutes or really you wanna spend a good 15 minutes. You always wanna show up to the listing five minutes early, okay? So Eric Jahom Dickey always says, early is on time, on time is late and late is unacceptable, all right? So at five tell, if your appointment is one o'clock, at five to one, you're knocking on the door, right? Hey, I'm here, it's one o'clock, right? Okay, so always make sure, don't ever be late or on time for a listing presentation, okay? Then what you wanna do is you wanna knock on the door and then step back, right? You don't wanna be that guy that knocks on the door and then you're sitting right in front of the door, um, especially during these times, um, before it was even a practice, you know, step away from the door, make them feel comfortable and then let them open the door and invite you in, okay? Once they invite you in, you'll say, hey, where can I put my stuff down so I can show you what my marketing plan is? Usually you wanna do a kitchen table, um, that's the best place to go. If you have to, you can do the couch or in the living room, although that's kind of awkward when you use your laptop for your presentation. Um, so, you know, sitting wise, all that stuff, kitchen table is the best, best place to do it. Everybody's comfortable there. Everybody feels good there. And then um, do a home tour, walk around the house. As you're walking around the house, what you want to say to them is, hey, can you give me a tour of the home? And as you're giving me a tour of the home, can you tell me any upgrades that you've made since you've purchased the home? 
because everybody wants to tell you that, right? They want to tell you how fabulous their home is and all that. And while you're walking around the home, you're taking notes to do your marketing remarks. Okay. So cherry, cherry, uh, you know, hardwood, cherry floors, um, granite countertops, uh, travertine flooring. Uh, you know, you're taking all those notes so that when you go back to do the marketing remarks for the home, it's real simple. You just go right down the line. And most of the time it filled up the 500 characters. So take good notes. You may not be listing this house for 90 days down the road and that's okay because now you have good notes. And what I would also do is I would take pictures of the water heater, the furnace, um, so that I could fill out the listing input form. I didn't have to call them up and say, hey, I, you know, I forgot what the, is your furnace gas or is it electric? You know, most people don't even know, right? So take a picture of the foundation if you have to, do whatever you need to do to take notes to make sure you fill out the listing import form correctly without having to go back to the seller, okay? Um, now, after you've done this four or five times, after you've filled out listing input forms four or five times, you should know what's on the form. So you're taking notes that are filling out the form, right? Now, if you, until then, feel free to pull the form out and start filling it out, right? I mean, it, it, it's no big deal. They don't know any different. Uh, you want to get it right the first time around because there's nothing as embarrassing as calling them up and saying, hey, I forgot, you know, what what your furnace looked like or what your roof looked like. And I'm, you know, and you're trying to play it off by getting the pictures back in time to, to do the marketing remarks, right? That's never, never a good idea. Um, so I would always have one of those, just the blue or green or purple form um, packets that we have in the office. Um, I don't have any here. Um, you know, we got them all over. So that's just what I would use. I didn't do anything fancy. Uh, and then any paperwork I would just shove into there. And then when the transaction was over, I would go through that file, uh, throw any duplicates away, uh, scan the file to my email and just chuck everything else. Right? Because remember as a real estate agent, it's not your responsibility <clears throat> to keep track of the paperwork. It's the brokerage's responsibility and that's why we use SkySlope because you have to, when you turn all that stuff in, we're required to hold on to it. So, um, you know, it's pluses and minuses to keep in paperwork, right? Uh, just keep the bare minimums. Don't keep notes. Don't keep any of that stuff. Um, just keep the bare minimums. So you don't have to worry about it if you ever have to go to court. Okay. The other thing is while you're walking around, you're thinking about the disc, right? Um, you want to think, okay, am I seeing high D stuff here? Am I seeing high I stuff, um, S's, C's? Because that's going to determine what kind of presentation you give. So as you're walking around, you're looking at stuff on the walls. You're looking at their offices, plaques on the wall. Is the house highly decorated with family photos? Is it uber clean? Um, so you're getting an idea of what kind of presentation you're going to get. Okay. So you walk in, there's trophies all over the place. You know, you probably know they're a high D depending on what the trophies are for. So you'll know they're a high D they're uber, uber competitive and they want everybody in the world to see their trophies, right? You know, plaques on the wall, you know, if it's an engineer, maybe a high S, high C, if it's a nurse, high I, high S. So you can kind of figure this stuff out as you're walking away. Um, and you can kind of determine uh, based on their, you know, their intonation and how frequently they're talking and all that good stuff um, to kind of figure it out too, okay? Now, once you sit down with the presentation, again, we go back to the marketing plan. Um, now, what we would do is uh, every year we would just buy, you know, like 50 of them. So uh, we would go to um, 
uh, bestvaluecopy.com and we would order 50 uh, fills for our marketing plan. And then we would always have 10 of them ready. So we didn't have to print that out every time we did a listing presentation. All we had to do is the CMA, pull the stuff off the, off the shelf and out the door. So we could literally be to somebody's house within an hour of getting the phone call. All right. So um, that always impressed people. And they always thought, you know, hey, the other guy told me he couldn't be here for three days. Well, we don't roll that way. This is how we roll, right? Now, I always had my listing presentation on my laptop. And I would always do my presentation from my laptop. Now, a lot of people will say you can do it from an iPad. That's fine. The only problem is iPads are like this big. I can't, I can't see that, right? So, I mean, if you can see it, it's probably fine, although the clients couldn't see it. So that's why I got a 15.6 um, um, laptop. So it was nice and big. We could all see it. Writing's really big, all that good stuff. And we can go from there. Uh, also, uh, we would always keep the CMA to last. So uh, we give them their marketing plan. And the reason why is because our market plan was always better than everybody else's because I added four or five different things in there that nobody else had. And that really showcased that when everybody else came in with their standard one that you print off the website, um, it really looked bleak and meager. You know, everybody can do that. Everybody has a 14 point plan. I had a 25 point plan. So my plan, even though it had some stuff in it that was just kind of really goofy, it didn't matter. My plan was still better than everybody else's, okay? Um, now, when you present the CMA, you don't present all 30 pages, you only do the last couple pages. The last couple pages are the recap. So it's, it's uh, like a CMA one-liner that you get out of the MLS. So I would only go through that CMA one-liner with them. And then if they said, hey, have you seen Billy Joe's house down the street? Then I would pull that one out and we'd look at the photos, right? So it really kept the CMA presentation to 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and when you do your listing presentation, you really want to avoid technology. So you can do the cloud CMA online and it looks really nice and it's a nice presentation. Although a lot of people's Wi-Fi is now are passworded. Um, your cell phone hotspot isn't that reliable. You could have a lot of things go wrong with technology when you get to the house. So I always found that it was just easier to do it and smarter to do it off of my laptop with a PowerPoint presentation because I knew that was good. I knew I could plug in my computer. I didn't have to get online. I didn't have to do any of that stuff. Um, and believe me, I you know, I love the shiny objects too. And I tried a lot of them in the beginning and a lot of them didn't work. And I ended up just keeping it simple. And a lot of agents will just go through the book and just do it through the book, which I didn't really like doing that. I, you know, I'm a tech guy, so the laptop worked best for me. So just keep that in mind, whatever you're comfortable with um, do, although I would highly avoid using technology in any way, shape or form. Okay, other than just doing a quick presentation off of your laptop. Now remember your slides are a trigger for what is your script. So I had practiced my listing presentation so many times, I knew what each and every script was. So all I had to do was see the, the screen and that would tell me what to say. I never read verbatim what was on the screen. I always had a script. So for example, for this one, hey, I just wanna make sure you understand this is all about your journey, right? My job is to make your journey the best one possible. I am here to make this as stress-free and smooth as possible. And that is my one and only job, okay? Um, so whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, I'm here to, I'm here to make that happen. 
Um, this is just, a, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go through my presentation real quick, okay? And you guys can see how these are just a script, all right? Now, I'm going to talk really fast. I wouldn't normally do this with somebody, depending on what their script is, uh, what their disk is. If they're a D, a high D, then I'm going to, this is how fast I would go, okay? So, um, so here is the... Here's a little information about me and the Think Bring Home team. Uh, as you can see, I have a bunch of accreditations. I have all that stuff. We've done over 700 transactions. Um, you can kind of go through that stuff later. Now, I do want to remind you now that all this stuff that I'm going to go over is also in this book. So if I miss something or you have a question, it's in the book, or you can just call me and I'll be more than happy to go over it with you. Now, this page, I will say, I don't, I didn't really do because this required customization. So I always stay away from this page. Um, and I stayed away from this page because our days on market was always really, really high because we, um, we specialized in taking over listings that other real estate agents couldn't sell. So the downside to that was we inherited their days on market. So if they were on that market for 90 days and couldn't sell it, the day we took it over, it was 92 days, right? So we were automatically starting 92 days and on. So I, I didn't like to use this page, okay? Now we're here for you. I have a team. I have a team of agents and transaction coordinators. We have a lender. We have an awesome inspector. We have an awesome title and escrow company. This is my team that I've put together to handle the entire transaction. So once I get you through the inspection, this team is really gonna take over. You won't hear much from me. Um, you will hear from them. And if you're not hearing from them, please let me know and I will make sure you hear from them. So once we get past that, then it's really gonna be driving that to close. Now, any real estate agent can get you an offer on your house. That's the easy part. The hard part is making sure that it closes. Over 25% of all sales that go under contract fail. It's my job to make sure you're not one of those 25%, okay? Now, this slide just kind of shows you everything that I'm going to do for you as your real estate agent. So as you can see, there's more to it than just putting it up on the MLS and sell it. We do a lot more than that for you all the way through the process. Um, here's just a quote from one of my past clients. Um, and you can feel free to call any of my clients at any time. Here's a quote from, quote from Warren Buffett. Um, and again, this is in your binder and you can check this out later. Um, now our brand says a lot. The Berkshire Hathaway brand carries a lot of weight. We are um, constantly, I guess I need to update this. We are constantly at the top of our industry in number of units, number of homes sold, um, you know, volume, all that good stuff. In 2020, we are the Harris Poll Real Estate Agency brand of the year. So that tells you about a lot about the Berkshire Hathaway brand. Now, I've been in the Puget Sound for 30 years. I know the Puget Sound. I've sold many homes in the Puget Sound. I have a pretty good idea of what's going on in this area. And I educate myself all the time on homes that hit the market. Um, with the Berkshire Hathaway brand, we are um, we cover the entire Northwest. So uh, these are just some of our offices. Now, let's talk about how I'm going to market your office. Uh, the National Association of Realtor does a study uh, every year of where buyers are finding homes. I went through this study and I made sure that I covered each and every one of these items within my marketing plan. So however the National Association of Realtors told me that buyers were looking for home, I created a uh, PowerPoint for that and a system for that, okay? All right, Mr. Seller, here is my 25-point marketing plan. Now, um, I will tell you there is a typo in here, and the typo is in here on purpose, okay? I don't think they fixed the typo. They might have fixed the typo. Um, 
Yep, it looks like they fixed the typo. Okay. In my old one, I had a typo in here and I left it in there on purpose because I wanted to see if they read this. Because most of the time, if we had time, we would send them a pre-listing um, presentation packet so they could go through the packet. So we would send the, the you know, the hardbound copy to them. Um, we'd have it hand delivered um, so they could go through it beforehand and then we could just touch on the particular item. So I always had a, a typo in here to see if they would, would find it. Um, and it was always um, in the social media one. So it looks like somebody fixed it. Oh, okay. So Mr. Seller, this is my 25 point marketing plan. Um, we don't do a 14 point plan. We do a 25 point plan. And the reason why is I went through the National Association of Realtors statistics and pulled out something for every one of those buyers, okay? So now real quickly, we're gonna go through uh, what I'm gonna do to sell your home. Now we're gonna help you stage your home. And once you choose me as your real estate agent, we will help you go through that and tell you exactly what you need to do to get your home ready. Now, I do want to remind you, staging is not decorating your home. Staging is preparing your home for sale. So it's some great tips. I have a, a bunch of um, pamphlets to give you for all this. So we'll come in and we'll help you stage your home. Again, I am an accredited staging professional, so I'll be more than happy to help you with that. Although my wife is 10 times better at it than I am. Uh, we are going to use professional photography. We would never use our cell phones. Uh, we're going to pay somebody to come in and take some great photos of your home. We're also going to do video for you and do a virtual tour. Um, if your home has, you know, some attributes that would do well with a, a drone shot, we'll do a drone shot. You'll hear a lot about Matterport 3D. We typically don't do that. And the reason why is a lot of buyers don't like it. It makes them sick, it makes them nauseous, and that's not what we want them doing uh, when they view your home online, okay? Uh, now with Berkshire Hathaway, you're gonna get international exposure. Most of that's gonna be with the Wall Street Journal and their different things. Um, now with Berkshire Hathaway, we also have that brand name. We have that luxury brand name. So we're gonna be reaching out to high-end buyers um, and a lot of time higher end buyers may not be purchasing homes in your price range, although they are looking for investment properties all the time. And a lot of them want really nice uh, investment properties. Now we're gonna put you on our website. We're not gonna put you on our website. We're gonna put you on everybody's website. So you're gonna be on John L. Scott, Windermere, Redfin, all those guys. So we are going to make sure that you get the internet exposure and the website exposure that you desire. Now, when you're on our website, you're going to be a featured listing. So when everybody goes to our website and we get a lot of traffic, they're going to see your home for sale and you're going to be one of five or six of our other listings that are going to show up. Um, so make sure, you know, once you get your house up that you're looking at realtor.com, Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, all these different third party websites so that you make sure your home is there and showcased. And if it's not, let us know. It's probably just a technological glitch and we'll fix that. Um, again, we're going to put your home on Facebook. We're going to put it on Pinterest, Twitter. The big one is YouTube. We're going to make your home YouTube famous. So um, we will kind of guard you against um, if you want us to, we'll take the address off all that good stuff. Although with YouTube, we're going to get you a great virtual tour and we're going to make it nice and short because people's attention spans are very short. So we want them to see the entire thing. So we're going to put your house on social media. Every social media activity that we can find, we're going to put it on there. We'll put it on LinkedIn, Facebook, Pinterest, all of them. So your house will get the social media exposure that it really deserves. Okay. Um, now we do do a little bit different with Facebook. We'll have your ad on some Facebook ads that will get it some really good push in the beginning. And then if it hasn't sold in 10 to 14 days, then we'll do some additional Facebook ads there um, as we see that necessary. Uh, we will only use color flyers for your home. We will never use black and whites. We will also do what's called an eco flyer, which is just a plastic flyer that we post on your home and it will have a QR code on it. 
um, and a lot of people, more people are using QR codes these days. So you'll get a QR code to your um, your virtual tour, and you'll get one to the our website that showcases your home. Now, on the just listed postcards, we will send out 200 just listed postcards to all your neighbors. So we'll make sure your neighbors are trying to sell, sell their home too. Okay. Now we will do a broker's open and an office tour. Office tours when we invite all the agents from our office within the first week to come see your home and give us feedback and let us know what's going on. And unfortunately, sometimes they're brutally honest and we kind of want that honesty to kind of tell us what's going on. And then after that, we'll do what's called a broker's open. So we'll invite all the real estate agents from this area to come in and see your home also, okay? Now, I do wanna tell you that open houses are really designed for real estate agents to get buyer leads. Only 4% of homes sell at open houses. I don't wanna kick, kick you out of your house for a 4% chance. I wanna make sure that you're getting everything that's really gonna to work to sell your home. So if you want us to do open houses, we'll be more than happy to come in and do those. If you're gonna be gone for the weekend, give me a call and we'll come in and we'll do those open houses because any marketing is good marketing. Although again, remember, we only have a 4% chance of you selling, okay? So what did I just do there with that seller? So what I've done is one, not set the expectation that I'm going to do an open house at his house every week. Okay. Two, I also set the expectation that if I do do an open house, you only have a 4% chance. So don't call me at 402 and ask me if I sold your house after the open house. Okay. I told you that it's for buyer to get buyer's leads and you only had a 4% chance. So don't set that expectation too high. Okay. So that's what I've done with this one slide, all right? Now, every real estate agent is gonna put a yard sign in the yard and that's great. Everybody's gonna put a lockbox on your house. Once somebody comes into a house, um, it comes into your house and once they leave, it sends me a text and an email. I'm gonna get that feedback from that agent. Now, remember, I, I only get about 47% of those agents respond. So 47% of the time, I'm gonna be able to give you that feedback. The other 53% time, I won't be able to. So I apologize ahead of time for these bonehead real estate agents, although it is what it is, okay? Now we're gonna use a QR code on your, on your yard sign. One's gonna to go to your YouTube. One's gonna to go to our website on their mobile app. So 46% um, of all buyers are using mobile apps now. So this is gonna be our way to showcase your house on the mobile app. Um, again, we talked about YouTube and making your house YouTube famous. We're gonna put a virtual tour on there. We're also gonna put a virtual walking tour. And if we have the drone shots and we feel we need to do drone, we'll do drone shots also, okay? Uh, now, what's unique about the Think Freak Home Team is we use an 800 number. Now, I wouldn't use an 800 number now. I'd use text messaging. Um, we use an 800 number. And basically what it is, we're going to put a sign writer on your house, sign the sign in the yard. Somebody dials that number, it hits your unique code. What happens is I get a notification as soon as they hit that code. And I, I got all their, I captured all their information. So once they're done, I can call them and say, hey, I noticed you looked at our 800 line for this particular home. Would you like a private showing of this home? All right, so and what will happen is if somebody clicks seven, if they click seven, it will dial me directly. If I don't answer, it goes to my wife. If my wife doesn't answer, it goes to our admin. So one of the three are gonna be here to answer any calls that somebody may have on this 800 number, okay? The other thing we're going to do is we're going to light up your sign. So when everybody else's signs go dark at night, we're going to light your sign up. You're going to get two to three hours extra marketing time that all the other houses in your neighborhood are not going to get. The other, the last thing that we really want to do is we want to do what's called a CMA tour. I call it my sleep better at night tour. So once we determine the price of your home, I wanna take you out to see four or five of your competition. 
so that you can see what's out there that's going to compete with you. I can see what's out there that's going to compete with you. We can come up with a rock solid price so you and I can both sleep better at night knowing that we priced your home. So what I've done with this one slide is I have told them that I back my numbers and I am confident about my numbers. And if you are not confident with my numbers, I'll be more than happy to take you out there and show you your competition. Now, I only got about five, 10% people took me up on this. And most of those were just people who wanted to see houses. So <clears throat> this gave me validity, right? It said, I know what I'm doing. You can check me if you want, you don't need to, but I know exactly what I'm doing, okay? Now we're also gonna to market to renters. And the reason why we're gonna to market to renters is because I'm affiliated with Home Partners of America. Home Partners of America is an investor that comes in and buys homes just like yours and then rents them out to people. So if I can find a renter, Home Partners will purchase that home for that renter. Now, why do you care? You care because it's a cash deal that gets done with no appraisal. So we don't have to worry about appraisal. We can just move right through the process. So we're also gonna market your house to renters. Um, now, one of the cool things that we do with Berkshire Hathaway is that we will provide you with a home warranty while your home is listed. So if something breaks, a water heater, a furnace, any of that stuff, they will cover up to $2,000. So it's a nice little coverage for you um, and we pay for that. So don't worry about it. You're going to get an invoice. Just chuck the invoice in the, because I've already taken care of it. So don't worry about it. Now let's talk about pricing. A couple things I want to bring up about pricing before we go into your specific home. The market sets the value of your home. I don't. So whatever you want to list your house for, I'm more than happy to do that. My job is to get people in the house. Your job is to set the price. So whatever price you want to list it at, that's totally up to you. I will tell you though, if your home hasn't sold in 14 days, my marketing plan works. I know it works. So it's all about price, okay? Um, now there's, there's three different types of markets. Seller's market, balance market, buyer's market. Right now we're in a seller's market. The months of inventory right now are at 1.35. So we're way, way, way into a seller's market. Now what's the next step? When you choose to use me, We'll come in, we'll sign the paperwork, we'll get your home ready, we'll stage it, we'll tell you what you need to fix, we'll come and do the photos. As soon as we do the photos, usually within two days, we can list it. In the meantime, we'll do the YouTube channel, we'll do all that other stuff, and we'll get the home ready for you, okay? All right, any questions about that listing presentation? Now, that took about 25 minutes, okay? Any questions? Uh, when you do a Facebook ad, uh, how much money do you take out on that? Um, we used to do $25. Now you got AdWorks, right? So AdWorks will do it for the first week for free. And if it's still on the market after that, then do another week, mm -hmm. right? For 20 or 50 bucks. They charge you 50 bucks. What yeah. pamphlet? Now, remember you got the AdWorks. So you put the seller's email in there and that's going to follow them wherever they go. So they're going to think that you're advertising their house everywhere. And really it's just following them. Right. Yeah, I, I took out a hundred dollar door and uh, I just got a whole bunch of comments talking crap about the house and it, I was overpriced and this and that. Honestly, when I was working for my mom and we did Facebook ads, I had a better outcome just sharing my page to local buy sell trades and things like that than actually taking out the money ad that I did. It reached people, but no one like there was either crap talking or there was the um, people that would look at it and then they were just you wouldn't hear from anyone. It got no leads when I did that. First of all, turn off the comments. Yeah. Don't allow comments on the ad. There's no reason for it. Two we don't we don't care if it works all we're doing is using an avenue that the national association of realtors told us worked making sure we cover that and making sure the seller understands that we're covering that yeah right because 
Facebook by itself may not work. Facebook with everything else that we're going to do is going to work. And I know it works because I, you know, we've sold many, many homes. So, you know, just think about that. I mean, if I'm in a listing presentation, the seller doesn't know that it doesn't work. They just know in the back of their head, he didn't mention Facebook. Why didn't he mention Facebook, right? Because they believe, and sometimes rightfully so, that their house needs to be on Facebook and you need to put it on Facebook. I mean, think about it, you know, that does the 800 number work? Yeah, maybe. I mean, one in a hundred times, mm -hmm. although it brings me buyer leads, which is what I really want. Yeah. Now, is it cool? Yeah, it's absolutely cool. Is 99% of other agents out there doing it? Absolutely not. Does it look like you're doing more than the average agent? Absolutely, right? It's just one, it's one cog in the wheel that you need to do in order to sell this home. And if you spend $100 on ads, you, you got buyer leads off of it, right? Uh, yeah, I did actually. That's what you want. Wait, wait. What, um, I've never heard of AdWorks. What is that? AdWorks is the company that gives us one week of free social media marketing for every one of our listings. So if you go to uh, the Berkshire Hathaway Resources, so BHH Resources, and you click on uh, social media. That's AdWords. All right, so real quick, I only got a couple of minutes left. Let's talk about scripts and dialogues and objection handlers. Your job as a real estate agent is to know your scripts, know your dialogues, and you will get a ton of objection handlers when you're talking with listings because they're always going to ask questions, right? Billy Joe Bob down the street told me he'd do it for a percent and a half on the sell side. Well, if you want to work with Billy Joe Bob, who is now a discount broker, then feel free because he's already negotiated, shown you what his negotiating skills are. So if you want to use me, I'm going to represent you like a top agent, or you can use somebody who's already showed they're not good at negotiating. Totally up to you, right? Redfin said they'll do it for 1%. Great. If you just want to be a cog in their wheel and just a number, and be passed around to five or six different people, then feel free to use Redfin. They are a discount brokerage. So if you feel comfortable with your half a million dollar, you know, investment with somebody who discounts their product, feel free, right? You have to know your objection handlers, right? This is really, really important, especially when you're on a listing presentation, okay? Know your scripts, know your objection handlers, all right? Um, this was always my favorite. I want to interview other agents. Great. Feel free to interview other agents. I guarantee you none of them have a marketing plan better than mine. The reason why I know that is because I compete against them all the time and I win listings 85% of the time. So if you want to interview others, that's fine. It's just going to show how great my marketing plan is. And if you have an agent that comes in your house and tells you that they have something that I don't have, you feel free to tell me I will steal it. I will may I will put it into my marketing plan. Okay. And nobody ever called me and said, Hey, he's got this. You don't. Right. So just know that. Um, FISVOs first, those are easy because the National Association of Realtor gives you those statistics. That's an easy one. Um, people say I'm too busy. No, I'm not too busy. I have a great team behind me. And my number one goal is to sell your house. And that's my only number one goal. So don't ever feel I'm too busy. You can call me anytime, right? Practice, 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 practice. You can practice your listing pre presentation a hundred times before you do one presentation, okay? So practice on each other. You can come in and practice to me, however you want to do it. That's totally up to you. Okay. All right. So any questions? Well, um, yes. So I should be doing this via like, I mean, I have one of the presentation um, on my computer. I always have printed it out and like what made a buyer's or list um, seller's book and like walked them through if, I felt they were that type of person, obviously. Is is the computer the better way to go or the listing buyer's book that I do? Um, I do both. 
Oh, you do? Because I have, I made, I made, like, and I go through and. Yeah, that's, that's too much. You're listening. <laughs> I wonder where you got that. You, I know you, me, you know. Uh, you already know. <laughs> Your listing presentation from the time you knock on the door to the time you walk out should be no more than one hour. Oh my gosh, my mom the other day, I went to one a couple days ago and my mom's, I got done in it and it was an hour and a half and that included me walking through the house and things like that with them. And she's like, you're done already? And I'm like, well, how heck, it's an hour and a half. How long am I supposed to, four, four hours later? <laughs> like, one that's hour. my mom. Don't go more than an hour, right? Because you're just gonna piss people off. So do what you need to do, have your ejection handlers ready, right? Last step, hey, I'm done with my presentation. I'm gonna get out of your hair. Uh, what do you think? Right? And then they'll start, well, we want to interview other people. Well, that's great. If you want to interview other people, feel free. I know that my marketing presentation, right? So, you know, and you just keep going and going and going. And I was going to e email you or text you. Um, the, the people that I'm working with, um, they're looking to post their home or list their home in springtime because they have a mass like huge garden and everything like that and right now obviously their house looks like crap with the winter fall everything but um they're waiting to do that do i get them under contract with me and then just continue to renew the after the 120 days and get them set up or just well, listening present presentation can be no more than 30 days Right, so the listing right. Company, 30 days. So yeah, you would have to update it every 30 days. So, is that, uh, you know, or just keep them in the radar? You're still giving them an opportunity to back out. I mean, they could say, okay, we're not going to do it. I would just keep track of them and keep on top of them. Um, okay, that's what I was going for. My mom's like, well, you should get them under contract or ask Paul and, and then just can, kind of renew it. But I know they've chosen me and I know they're they're trying to move out of state. And so I don't I'm not worried that they're going to like back out because they have they have they want to move. They have issues and everything going on. So I, I'm not worried about them not using me, but I just wanted to keep them on my radar and keep in touch with them and let them know that I'm still here so that I'm still popping in their mind. And yeah, famous last words, right? That, that's what it says on the uh, listing agreement or whatever. It says it has to hit the market within 30 days of this agreement or whatever. No more than 30 days. And that's what I thought. So, okay, well then, confirmed. I mean, it's always great to get them under contract. You know, if they're going to be 30 days out, then I would say, yeah, 60 days, yeah, probably, you know, but not four months, right? Right. That's a long time. Yeah. So it's up to you to make sure you're keeping track of them. And, and... All right, any other questions? <laughs> no? Okay, we're all good? All right, awesome. I'll put this, uh, we'll probably get it up and running by the end of the day. Yogi? Thank you. Okay, adios. Bye.